If you are coming back late, it doesn't hurt you. It won't take one minute. Call her. You know, the traffic is heavy. I'll be coming back late. All those little, little things, they help us in defining fellowship, in refining our fellowship. And so I'm coming to number three here. Number three here, we're looking at transparent fellowship with reciprocity without falsehood. We have the fellowship one with another. And fellowship means love. Fellowship means that you consider her and she considers you. We're looking at Matthew chapter 7 and we're looking at verse 12. Here is the very basis of true fellowship. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. You see, maybe you've not read from Genesis to Exodus to Leviticus to Numbers to Deuteronomy to the end of Malachi. But he says all that the prophets are saying, all that those teachers are saying with those doctrines, your relationship to God, your relationship to man, everything is a, is a kind of contained in this, all things, all things ye would whatsoever that your wife should do to you. You man, if you were the wife, how would you behave? How will you respond? And you woman, if you want the husband, what would you expect that she would do unto you? Now, before you do anything, anything whatsoever, my wife likes this. My wife does not like this. When I say this, even though it's the truth, it goes the wrong way. And I've learned my lesson. Have you learned your lesson? My husband does not appreciate this and it doesn't please her. It breaks our fellowship. It destroys our togetherness. Whenever he talks like this to me and my wife does not like referring to the members of her family, born again or not born again, it doesn't like you casting aspersions on members of her family. And the man, it doesn't like you to say, uh -uh, is, that, is that what uh, your mother was cooking when you were younger? I give you better food here. My husband doesn't like that. Is that the way your, you know, your father was eating? He prefers to eat with a son. Uh, and then, you know, even when I was an infant, my my parents taught me to eat with knife and fork. My husband doesn't like that kind of comment. It's like you belittle my family. Now, we notice whatsoever you want her to do to you, do to her as well. And whatsoever you want him to say to you, say that as well. That's how we have fellowship. And when you say that, you say that innocently. And you say that with transparency. Truly, in your heart, you're forgotten all those other things and everything you can say that will print her and pick her and they prick her and also go the wrong way. You've made them to go with the water under the bridge. Now, you are transparent and there is fellowship. You know, as somebody, you used to go out, you're going to work. She knows I'm going to work. That's how I feed the family and so, but she wasn't around in the city room. She was at the city room, she knows I'm going to work and then you've gone. And then your wife comes back, where is daddy, where is daddy? And then such is everywhere and it's gone, uh -uh. why does this man do like, cannot even have the courtesy and the respect and the love to say, darling, I'm going to walk, look at the time now, thank you very much, have a great day, have a nice day. He doesn't do that, why don't we learn? And why don't we just understand, here is fellowship. I'm going someplace, I'll come back at this time. And now in the days of Jesus, uh, you know, this, uh, this thing you're holding in your hand, what do you call it? Tell me, remind me. You don't know? <laughs> Tell me now. In this day of, you know, mobile telephone, everybody has, if you're coming back late, it doesn't hurt you. It won't take one minute, call her. You know, the traffic is heavy. I'll be coming back late. All those little, little things, they help us in defining fellowship.
in refining our fellowship. And so we have a transparent fellowship. If you happen to be with a man, you happen to be with a woman in your office, and maybe you, are, you have to do some work, and uh, you know, as if your wife was there, and if she's not there, either when you come back home, you say, you know what we did today? I saw this man, I saw that woman, and we did this, and we did that. That doesn't hurt anybody. And all those little, little things, they make us to have fellowship. Well, we'll have fellowship. I said, oh, we'll have fellowship. Did you see what Moses did? Moses sat down with Jethro, the father-in-law. We don't know whether the wife was there or not, but whatever Jethro was thinking, after these many years of separation, my husband loves my father. And that does a lot. And then Moses told him everything they have gone through. And the Jethro also said, you know, in your absence, this is what had been happening. They had good communication together. That's what we need to do. They are not difficult. And with the grace of God in our lives, and with the reconciliation with God, I believe things are going to become better. Yeah. Your life, better family. Yeah. In your home, better family. Now, uh, well, the children too will need fellowship. Uh, Daddy, you are you being a mathematician, and now look at the two sons that you have. The sons that were brought back, they know nothing of mathematics. Mathematics is not the in thing, the great thing in median construction, and all that. that's not the great thing in median. But Egypt, where Moses was coming from, they taught them mathematics, they taught them archaeology, and they taught them architecture, they taught them everything. And now the children have come back, and you see that they know next to nothing. Just spend a few minutes every day and sit down with them. That's fellowship. That you are saying, okay, that's how they do this, that's how they do this, that's how they calculate, it, that's how they calculate. It's not that when the children come, you've been so busy, the children have slept before you came back home, and you're so dutiful, you've gone out of the house before the children wake up. Help them and know them, know their strong points and know their weak points, and know how to tailor them and train them. Your family will make progress. Say the amen that you are going to work on. Yeah.